How to find focus when you are overwhelmed. Hey everybody, it's Braden Chase here and I would like you to welcome you here to another uh, episode here of Good Morning with Braden. <laughs> and I actually haven't um, produced a video here for a little while. I've been very <clears throat> overwhelmed. Um, kind of in a good way, but also in a, in a bad way. And that's kind of what I want to talk about for a little bit. Hey Jim, nice to see you. I have been looking for these kinds of things, like how do I overcome these things and how do I get control? So a little bit of a backstory. I went to um, Funnel Hacking Live, which is a huge conference, learned a ton of cool stuff, and I was ready to do all sorts of cool things, had big plans and structures like, woohoo, gonna rock the world. Um, and then I got home and kind of reality sets in as it usually does, right? We often go to these events or these experiences and we have all these really cool, like high strategy, cool things that we're going to pull off. Hey, Frank, thanks for being on. And but then, <laughs> right, we come to the real world and kind of get slapped to the ground. Right. And all of our cool ideas fall apart. So how do we how do we beat this? Um, and the answer is, that, that, that kind of came to me, came to me in a bunch of different ways from different source, source, sources. So one of them that came through was, um, actually I was talking with a chiropractor and he told me something that I didn't know. He said, your, your nervous system, your nerves in your body recognize pressure as a higher priority than pain. And that didn't make sense at first, but he kind of explained it and it was a really long conversation, so I won't get into all of it here. But pressure is ranked higher on by your nervous system than pain is. So even like sharp points, right? Like needles. If you put pressure around the needle point where you're going to get an injection, the pain is reduced because your, your nervous system is recognizing that pressure first. So it's like, okay, what's that? So it's this really interesting idea. And what kind of came from that, from all of these events that I've been to and experiences and learning and facts and all this cool stuff that I learned, um, it's a lot of mental pressure. It's a lot of push. It's a lot of things like, oh, I have to do this and I have to do this. Oh, that would be cool. I would do this one and this thing would be cool. Let's do that one over there. And all this excitement happens all the time. Cool. But we make these mental commitments with ourselves, and that increases our mental pressure. And because of that pressure, we actually slow down. In the same way when you put pressure right on veins, the circulation stops. In that same way, when you put mental pressure on your ideas, on your brain, on your mental space that you have, you will reduce the amount of free thinking, of creative thinking, of ideas, of progress, of understanding that you can do. You simply will, because that's how your nervous system functions. When you feel that mental pressure or physical pressure, but you feel that mental pressure, your, your brain starts to shut down and say, okay, deal with the pressure, deal with the pressure, fight back, right? Solve this issue. Don't start new problems. Fix the problem that's already here. Fix this pressure. And there's a guy named Alex Charfin, and he has this phrase that I've loved for years. And he says, if you want to be successful, reduce pressure and noise. So, okay, so how do you do that, right? Reduce pressure and noise. Reduce pressure and noise. How do you do that? So um, there's another guy, right? Like I said, this is coming at me from a lot of directions. Another guy named David Allen. And he was really popular here in the, like the early 2000s, but over the past 10 years or so, he's kind of fallen out of favor here in the United States. But he's really popular in Europe. And one of the things that he teaches is how do you do this? How do you reduce or remove that mental pressure? And he's got five steps on it, and I follow his five steps, so all credit to David Allen for developing or, or identifying whatever this stuff is. But the first step, right? How do you find your focus when you're overwhelmed with stuff, okay? First, you have to collect all of the things that are in your head, all of those commitments that you've done, and write them down, okay? Paper, computer, don't care. Write it down, get it out of your head, write it down. Okay, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, blah, blah, blah. and you would be surprised at how many commitments you end up having once you actually write them down. We think, oh, I only wanna do these six things. Wait, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14, 143, right? It, it's insane. Sometimes how many commitments said that we have told ourselves, I will do this, and then you never do it. That's mental pressure, okay? Good, yes, come on over, Gordon, I love it, <laughs> okay? Um, that mental pressure pushes on you, right? So first step is collect all of those things, get it out of your head, write it down on paper, bam. But there's more, right? You can't just stop there, write it down. Oh, now I feel better. Because you actually will feel better just by writing it down, but not better enough. 
Okay, so the next step, right, step two, is clarify what do those things actually mean to you? Okay, we often create commitments with ourselves. Oh, I want to do this, but when you actually sit down, you look at it on paper, you look at your real life, and you kind of go, I'm, I'm not going to get that done. That's your kid done, right? <clears throat> we'll remove that from the list. I don't need to do that thing. Okay, but you know, you never think of that until you actually write it down. So the second stage is clarify. And you are clarifying, you are removing things that you don't need or specifying things, right? Often we write things down on our list like mom. What does that mean, right? Mom, mom, I like mom, mom's nice. But what does it mean, right? In my head, in my heart, I have some kind of a commitment with mom. And that means, oh, give mom a great birthday party or help mom get to the hospital on Thursdays or something, right? But what does mom mean? You have to clarify and understand that thing, okay? Next step is now organize those things that you've clarified. Put them together and build a system. Okay, I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna do this one on Thursday, and this one, and this one, and this one on Saturday, and this one, and this one, and this one on, on Friday. And you organize it in some way. Now there's all sorts of systems we can talk about. How do you organize it and where do you organize it and says who and why. Whole nother question, right? Whole nother system, right? But that's the idea. Just organize it in some way that you can see and review later on. This one, this one, this one. Got it. Okay. Fourth step is to is uh, let's see, organize review, right? So you have to actually go back to the list that you've built. I wrote this down, I clarified, I organized it, I planned it out on my calendar or whatever. I've got all my stuff. I'm going to go have a beer, right? And just walk away and never look at the list again. It's completely useless. Like you have to look at the thing again and it'll guide you and you go, okay, do this one, do this. One. Okay, good. Come back to the list. Did I do it? No. Yes. Okay. Now come back to the list. Okay. Just check and review the thing. And once you review it, then you have freedom. The mental pressure is released and you have freedom to say, yes, I'm going to do that. Or sometimes no. Sometimes I look at my list of, you know, 40 things that I got to do and I go, you know what? That door squeaks too much. I'm going to go put some, some lubricant on it because that bothers me. I'm going to deal with that first and then I'm going to come back to my list, right? Instantaneous, but I can't think of those things, those little breaks, those things that bother me and fix those simple things when I have 40 different tasks floating around in my head and creating mental pressure, creating that overwhelm. Hey, Chloe. You have to structure things and review it so that you can make those choices, right? That's what gives you the ability to choose between yes to this or no to that. If you don't have it written down, if you don't have something physical to look at, you don't actually have the freedom to choose anymore. It's very important. Write this stuff down. Okay. And then the last step, five steps, right? Five steps is to just do the thing, <laughs> whatever it is, right? Sometimes people forget that one. Go and do the thing. I have collected, I've written all my stuff down. I've clarified what it means to me. I've organized it into a system that I can understand and see a calendar, a list or whatever. And then I've reviewed it to say, okay, these are the tasks I need to get done. And then I make my choice because you can only do one thing at a time. You can't do six, you can't do four. You can't even do two. You can do one, one thing at a time. What am I going to do? This project. What am I going to do? That task. One at a time. Make the choice of one. Push them all out. Everything else out. Right? And do the one thing. Because you can never release that mental pressure. You can never release that overwhelm until you know what it is you are not doing. Okay? You cannot relax. You cannot release your overwhelm and stress until you know what it is you're not doing and that you can be okay with it, that you can let it go. It's okay right now that I'm not working on that project because I know that this one is more important because I did all of my checklists. I went through my collect and I went through my clarify and my organize, my review and my redo. I did all of these steps. Okay. I know that I don't need to do those and I need to do that one right there and I can make that choice. But you can't make choices like that. You can't make trust-based, honest, you know, open-minded, clear mental space type answers and choices and questions. You can't do that unless you've built some kind of a list to get it out of your head and then review it objectively. So this has just been floating around in my head for a couple of days um, as I've been dealing with this huge, massive amount of, of input on myself going, what on earth am I doing? What are all these different things that I have going on? And I have too much. I simply have too much. So I have to sit down and I wrote it down. I've got a big old, big, big list over there on my computer. <laughs> And I'm writing it down going, okay, 
set that down. Okay, pick that up. Nope, nope, put that back down. I don't want to do that right now. Uh, that one. Okay, good. Now, sorting. And it, it's hard, right, to think through everything. It's taken me weeks to process all this information. I'm still processing different parts of it. But as we, as I go through these steps over and over and over again, I'm still able to, hey, Marcelo, nice to see you. As I go through all of these steps, I'm able to sit down and be like, okay, that piece, that one's really important. Let's hold on to that one. Okay, that one's not. And I can move these around and even with all of the stress and the frustration, because there's a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of stuff in your life, there's a lot of stuff in my life, stuff in business, stuff at work, stuff in whatever, stuff going on, right? We always have too many things going on. But the only way you can honestly and, and truthfully and emotionally deal with these things in a, in, a, in a way that gives you clear mental space where you're actually making good judgment calls instead of emotional fear-based judgment calls by getting it out of your head and analyzing it in this objective way. And it'll give you that calm, that focus. You will reduce the pressure, the mental pressure. You'll reduce the noise, that mental noise. You'll reduce the overwhelm if you can just get it out of your head. Okay, so one last thing. That was David Allen, by the way. His, his book's called Getting Things Done, and it's awesome. And um, the other guy was Alex Charfin. He talked about reducing pressure and noise. He's a great guy. Check out his books as well. Again, my name is Braden Chase. Thanks, you guys, for listening for so long. I know it was a little bit longer today, but it's just a big deal. Stay focused on your things. Uh, get it out of your head. Write it down. Create an organization. Review your lists. And you can reduce that pressure and noise so that you can be the creative genius that you really are. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.